No skinwalker slash goatman thread? Well I'll have to fix that. Living in the Ozarks, Goatman is believed to live in the woods somewhere. Live a ways out of town, woods everywhere. I go explore the woods all the time when I get bored, been damn near everywhere in the woods near my house. There's one spot I've never ventured into. The trees are extremely dense there, just looking and you can't see much farther than a few feet. Walked around it before, it covers probably two to three miles of land. Friend I've known since before kindergarten comes to visit from out of state, we go exploring the woods the first day he gets here. After walking for a while we come up to the dense area and I tell him about Goat Man. Whatever man, that shit's dumb, let's go in. Screw it dot jpg. The moment we enter the dense area I get chills running up my spine. We venture deeper in and it's friggin creepy, thick overhead foliage blocks out way too much light for my liking. Here's something in the bushes. Stand our ground, we're men damn it. Rattlesnake comes slithering out a few feet away from us. Nope.jpg We run, in different directions. Start to slow down when I realize he's not with me anymore. Hear a deafening shriek that couldn't have been more than 75 to 100 feet away. Stop running and start yelling for my friend. No response, realize I have to go back the way my friend was running, I know these woods, he doesn't. Keep yelling his name, still no response. Dodging through trees frantically calling his name. He steps out from behind a tree and I run into him, he's much larger than I am so I fall, he doesn't move a frigging inch from the impact. Pissed off that he didn't answer my shouts, tell him let's find our way out of here and go back to my house to smoke. Suddenly this mother lover is a master of the woods and leads us straight out of the dense area of trees, lingers at the edge and looks back in like he doesn't want to leave. Whatever, brush it off and go back to my house. Toss him a joint and a lighter, he stares at them looking perplexed. He's smoked plenty of times, mother lover knows how a goddamn lighter works. Take them from him and light it myself, he stares at me in awe as I do the most mundane everyday things. I've read a lot about the goat man, this all seems to fit the bill so far. Dismiss it as me being paranoid and continue to chill with my best friend. It starts to get late and I tell him he can crash in my spare bedroom. I gotta run home and get something, I'll probably just sleep there tonight, I'll be back tomorrow. Mother lover is visiting from out of state. Home is over 12 hours away. Let's see where this is going. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. He walks outside leaving his car keys and just walks straight into the woods. Nope.jpg Lock the doors, lock the windows, something is seriously wrong here. The next morning I call a few friends and have them come over, if that bastard comes back I'm not going to be alone with him. He shows up a few hours later wearing his same clothes as the previous day. Notice blood under his fingernails, I guess he was hungry last night and needed to go eat, thankfully he didn't eat me. He had arrived on the 5th of May and was planning to leave on the 12th. I want this guy out now, the 6th of May. Ask him when he plans on going home, tell him he's been here nearly a week and that he planned on leaving today. Oh, yeah. I'll probably get going in a few hours. Confirmed this is not my friend, he's been here a day but believes it's been a week when I tell him so. The hours drag on slowly but he doesn't become hostile or anything, 
and eventually he gets in his car and drives away. That was earlier this month and he never came back so I'm assuming he actually went home? Haven't heard from him since then, don't want to either. We'd been best friends for nearly 18 years and now he's gone. It happened a few weeks ago and I honestly don't know what to do. I feel like that first night that he left, he was going back into the woods to eat my friend's body. Be me, Croatian. Be 23. Finally get my hunting license. Buy a Benelli semi-auto 12 gauge. Go to forest at midnight with my hunter friends. Find old Yugo factory. Creepy AF. Explore the factory while chugging Niki beers. There are a bunch of weird sigil type shit on the walls. There are no graffiti, only creepy sigils. I think they are in Latin idk. Creepy AF. One friend goes to piss in the dark. He is gone for too long. Try to use my electrician skills to turn on the lights. Find breakers or what's left of them. They have been clawed out of the wall. Try to search for a friend. We can't find him. Hear nothing. We are shitting ourselves. We see a silhouette in the dark. It starts running and screaming towards us. It doesn't look like Stipe. We fire on the thing. 5 12 gauge shells and 2.308 shots later. It's dead. It definitely isn't Stipe. Pale bald bastard. His long fingernails are bloody. Fresh. Is like two and a half meters tall. We all agree to get the hell out and call the cops. We run out of the factory. Other friends Leja trips on a branch and falls in the darkness. Me and Dewey are too afraid to say anything, we keep running. Hear screaming and shooting. We get into the car and drive the hell away. We stop at the first village we see and call the cops. Cops find no bodies or blood. We call the families of Stipe and Zlaja. Nobody knows who the hell we are talking about. TFW we killed one skinwalker type mother lover. TFW they erased our friends out of existence. I was told skinwalker type shit was only in America. Why was that thing eating my friends in an old Yugo Plastica factory? What do I do? Should I go back and recite the Bible with a priest? Get more people, more guns, and a lot of gas? Should I get some TNT my grandpa left from the war and blow it all up? Stream going there again? Or should I just give up? Zlaja was the godfather to my newborn, and Stipe went to school with me. This was one of my friend's dad's stories. Ted grew up in the late 60s in Edenville, base of M.T. Rainier. His dad owned a cabin on the edge of town, and he was a pretty outdoorsy kid. He was about 16 when the story took place. Him and a friend, 17, we'll call him B, took a weekend camping trip up the side of the mountain. Drove up a logging road for a while, then hiked two or three miles till they found a site. Clearing in the trees, mossy ground, perfect place for a campsite. Hadn't been to rainy, so a fire was no problem. Ted and B brought a two-person tent, and Ted's dad gave him his .45 to take with him for bears and shit. Get tent set up. Ted and B leave to get firewood. Noting abnormal, but while they're walking Ted said that they heard a deer run off, covered by the trees, they didn't see it. They also find some bones of a deer, 
a shoulder with leg and the head had been dragged about twenty feet away up a hill. Daylight's fading, so Ted and B take what they have and get back to the tent. Build a fire, and bullshit till about eight o'clock. Ted and B hear a shriek up the mountain. Sounded similar to an elk call. Nothing too weird, but Ted still grabs the pistol from the tent. Sets it on his lap. At about nine o'clock, they heard bushes rustling and branches breaking at the edge of the clearing. Thinking it's a bear, Ted fires the pistol in the air. Noise stops. They put out the fire and get into the tent. B wakes Ted up in the middle of the night and tells him to listen. There's noise in the clearing, like footsteps. Ted looked at B who was white as a clan's member's robe. They're pretty damn far up a mountain and the login road was no longer being used. There shouldn't be anyone up here. Bears also tend to start hibernating around this time. So it shouldn't have been a bear. Neither of them slept the rest of the night. Next morning. Campsite looks fine. Moss around campsite and around tent looks trampled. But Moss doesn't give good footprints. They decide to pack and leave camp after breakfast. Need more firewood. B gathers while Ted watches with pistol. From about 50 feet away they hear the same shriek as previous night. Ted and B book it. Stopping just long enough to grab packs from campsite. They start running the remaining distance to the logging road. They hear rustling the entire time they are running. Get to the truck, start that shit up and drive like hell down the mountain. I'm pretty sure Ted also said something about seeing a figure off the side of the road. This was like, six in the morning as well. So the sun was just starting to come up. Ted didn't go camping after that and didn't let my friend and I camp outside of his cabin. He also owned a shitload of guns. He used to tell us this shit when we were staying at the cabin at like, 10 o'clock at night. Didn't make for good sleeping. Buddy and I are camping, West Virginia. Drinking a metric shit ton, metric, you see, of whiskey. Go to sleeps. Wake up out of nowhere, must piss immediately. JPG. Buddy still KO'd by power drinking. Pissing on tree, weird smell like right after lightning strikes, blame it on alcohol and system. Hear something like sniffing, feel something wet on back. Nope. JPG, spin, swing service sword. Miss WMV. Run to tent, lay down, lay sword across chest, hear footsteps for a minute, something like a giggle, and then silence. Wake up, sword no longer on my chest, walk outside, deer in middle of area, sword buried a good seven to eight inches into its middle. Buddy walks out of tent, makes the exact same giggle as I heard. Don't mention it. Never mention it. He constantly invites me to go camping with him again. Move away ASAP. Never look back. Seriously, the guy went from games and guns to site programming and car mechanics. Creeps me the hell out to this day. Not sure if flesh gate or elaborate ruse. I started reading this thread last night and got so genuinely frightened, I had to stay up until the sun rose. I'm glad it's still here though and not 404D. Does anyone know if there are stories like this originating in South Carolina? I basically live in a small subdivision out in the middle of the Boonas, about 20 to 30 minutes away from civilization. 
I've heard some freaky shit in the woods behind my house, but now that I think about it. We moved here in 2007. Live in these townhouses, our neighbor is an older woman, in her late 50s. Well, when we first moved in she was kind and came over to welcome us. Saw her when I used to get up for school in the morning going off to work. She always went out of her way to greet us. Used to see her working out in her garden all the time out back. Had grown children and grandkids that would come visit occasionally. Then one night while my parents are gone, she comes over beating at our door frantically. My grandma answered and she was begging us to call the police because she thought something was in her house. Right then my parents came home. Her other neighbor had a gun and came over, so dad and him went and checked every inch of her house. Told us not to worry and she thanked us profusely. Few years pass and slowly but surely it's as if she disappears. Never see her around, not leaving for work, but her car is still gone, her family stops coming around, garden unattended. Months pass. Then one morning I got up for school around 5 a.m. See her outside in the backyard, just standing there, staring at the woods unmoving with her back to me. Hair is ruffled, robe askew. I stared and wondered what she was doing. Shrugged it off and went to get ready, then came back an hour later. She was still there. Same spot. This went on for days. Same time every morning, staring at the woods. Finally I got the courage to poke my head out and ask if she was all right. She said nothing. Kind of jerked about, like she was twitching. This ritual went on for weeks. I never told anyone about what I saw, but eventually she wasn't out there anymore. I honestly don't know what happened to her or if she even lives there anymore. It's been a few more years since then, I'm 20 now and out of high school. Going to move with my boyfriend to Montana soon and now I'm extremely nervous because of the area. What with the forests and everything? Does anyone know if there's stories from Montana or have any advice about living there? I don't want to be taken by a skinwalker. Sorry my story wasn't very exciting but before now I've known nothing of these creatures. I'm staying up until dawn again it seems. So my girlfriend's grandfather has told me this story a few times, but it never clicked till now. Her family lived out in Georgia, if I remember right. He grandfather and his friend go out squirrel hunting. He grandfather and his friend have a dog following them. He tried to scare it, shoo it away. At one point he no longer sees the dog. He hears movement in the bushes near him. Something charges at him and he freaks and unloads his gun. He ends up killing the dog he was trying to get to leave them alone. He feels like shit about it. Still he and his friend continue hunting squirrels. He tells me he does not get to shoot any seeing how his friend is a crack shot. They get to a clearing. Not too far in the from where they are standing, they both see a large black dog eating a dead deer. Before he knows it his friend is already aiming at the dog and pulls the trigger on his shotgun. They both hear the dog scream in pain as if it has been hit. Only her grandfather said this dog made the most loud odd frigging screeching death yell he ever heard in his life, like they shot a person. Tells me they both end up going to where the dog had been. When they get to the spot they believe the dead dog would be, they found nothing. No dog and no blood. 
he feels that there was no way his friend missed that dog and that they in fact shot it, so he has no idea how they could no find blood or its body. To me it was always the friend missed the dog or grazed it. Now that I'm on slash x slash I thought maybe it was a wind ingo or something. He has a bunch of crazy stories he likes telling me. Here's a personal story of mine. Be about 14. Been in scouts for a couple years. Troop goes camping one weekend. Two people to a tent. Get paired up with a first or second year kid named Richard, probably two years younger than me. Been talking to him, had become friends with him recently. Get there, do regular shit for a few hours. Everyone retires to their tents. Chilling in tent with Richard. I have to get up and piss. Get out of tent and walk to the tree lean. Start pissing. Look up. Notice a strange, organic looking object hanging in the trees a few feet above where I'm pissing. I start getting used to the darkness. It's a half of a deer. Head still intact, neck was connected to an intact leg by a large piece of skin. Nothing else of the deer was there. Metallic smell makes me gag a little. Thought nothing of it. Assumed that a hunter had killed the deer, skinned it, took what meat that it could or some shit. Thought metallic smell was the deer carcass. Head back to tent. Richard and I start to get to sleep. Hear what sounds like strange jittery laughter coming from outside. Richard asks what the hell I'm doing. That's not me. Probably another that kid went up to go piss too. Why is he making that sound then? I don't know, maybe he's cold and shivering or something. Fine. A little time passes, side of tent starts rustling. Anon, stop. I'm trying to sleep. That's not me bro. Shut up, yes it is. I'm not stupid. Tent rustles some more. Richard sits up. Anon, sto. Richard stops talking mid-sentence. Sort of alarmed me a little bit. I sat up too, both to confront Richard and to see what he was so alarmed about. The tents had small mesh windows that you could look out of. Richard staring intently at it white as bone. Figure standing on the other side of mesh window. Looked humanoid, but was really crooked. Notice its face. What hell? Its face looks like mine would, if I got hit by a truck, it looked like a bad imitation of my face. Creepy ass voice from figure. Shut. Up. Rich. No me. Nope. Figure stands there repeating itself for about an hour. It half walks, half shambles away. No sleep that night. Richard quits scouting. Two or three years later. Stayed in touch with Richard. I start reading about all of this Goatman shit on. Remember what happened on that scouting trip. Ask Richard about it one night. Hey Richard, you ever heard about something called a Goatman? Anon, shut the hell up. Don't bring that up, ever again. Okay. Never speak of it again. Be up in NW Georgia trout fishing with my uncle's equipment. I brought a little sack of cans and bottles to shoot with my plinker for fun. On a rock in the middle of a nice, decent-sized stream, crack open my first beer before casting out a ways downstream. Everything is so nice, start wanting to go in the woods more. 
All of a sudden, the most frigging scary scream I've heard in my life. It sounded like a woman screaming and getting her throat gauged out mid-scream. It's a good ways away. Hear rustling and am ready to frigging dash across the stream to get Plinker off of log it's on. Look over on the other bank, 30 meters down behind the brush. It's a frigging black bear skittering up the tree like it was being chased by death. Go across and pick up Plinker, try and listen for anything. Scream happens again, nearly shit myself. Nope the hell out, leaving my uncle's stuff. Never look back until I get to my pickup, proceed to drive all the way to the ranger station nearby. Try and get in to report that shit. Get dismissed as some crazy bastard that had too many beers. Look back in window, see black ranger guy that talked to me giving some of the other fellas in there a really frigging scared. Holy shit what the hell is up? Look. Go drive off and never want to come back to the frigging county. This is my skinwalker story. Be me 19 at the time and three friends, Adam, Jake and Kent. Decide to go camping in a large forest a few hours away that Kent used to go to to take pictures of nature and shit. We get there set up our camp and shit. After we get everything set up, we decide to play risk. Kent gets kind of pissed because we drove all this way into a forest, only to do something we can do at home. Adam agrees and I do as well. Decide for a quick walk in the forest then play risk. Jake doesn't want to go in case we get lost, none of us have been here before. Tell him Kent has and he knows his way around the forest. Jake says no, but he will wait for us here and get something cooked up, and get the risk board ready. Jake's gets a backpack fills it with some food we brought and water bottles who wants to carry this. No one wants to carry it, we're men, we don't need water. Throws bag at Adam Adam you're the only one that I sent an idiot. We leave and go into the forest. Will Kant, also all of what I said here is actually important to the story and not just random shit, remember this, action starts soon. We go pretty deep inside during our walk, and Kent wouldn't admit it but I think he got lost a few times. Decide we should head back. Adam has to shit. We all go piss slash shit then decide to meet up back here after our pissing slash shitting is done. I come back first cause I only had to piss, then Kent comes back. We wait a few minutes then hear a yell. We look around calling Adam's name. Adam comes back behind us. His glasses are smashed but he doesn't even notice. Ask him if he is okay, he says he's fine. We go back to camp asking Adam what happened. He keeps saying haha Anon slash Kent, don't worry about it. He is being weird, Kent is acting up as well, looking scared and shit. We get to camp and Jake gets pissed for taking so long. We eat then go play risk. Adam doesn't want to. He wants to go back into the forest. Jake is pissed begging us not to go because he wants to play risk. We tell him we're not going back and not to worry. Adam goes in the tent not wanting to play risk. Right before he goes in Jake asks for the backpack back from Adam. I realize Adam didn't have the backpack after he came back from his shit. Go into the tent. Adam what happened, your frigging glasses are broken. Your shirt is ripped and you don't have the backpack what happened. Ha ha Anon, don't worry about it. That frigging phrase is exactly the same as all the other times. I didn't notice the other times he said it. 
I ask again and he looked like he was thinking. I fell down a slope, wanna go see it? He asked. I say no, he shrugs and leaves the Kent while I'm still talking. He goes to Kent, hey Kent I saw a really nice rock in the forest you might wanna take a picture of it. Kent nopes says we're leaving. Jake is pissed cause he had to take time off work. I ask Kent what the hell does he mean. Kent tells me and Jake that Adam is possessed or some shit. He tells us how he found out about the forest. It was 2011 the month was July I think, or August any time in the summer really, Jake had a job though the rest of us were on summer break and it is Ontario, Canada. Nothing really important from here on out. Kent tells us he found the forest, at some photography convention or some other stupid photo shit he met a guy who told him the forest was great for taking pictures. Kent and that guy he met go to the forest. They meet some old guy saying the forest is haunted or some shit cause weird things happen. So we pack our shit and go. Adam is crying he doesn't want to go. He keeps asking if we can go back, making excuses. When we get back onto the main road and hit a stop sign Adam frigging opens the door and just gets out of the truck as I'm starting to drive again. Kent runs after Adam, Adam throws rocks at Kent. He keeps yelling I want to go back I want to go back, let's go back. Jake is panicking yelling at Kent to forget Adam. Screw this shit JPEG. I honk the horn for about 10 seconds, Adam falls to the ground holding his ears, I was trying to get them to shut up, I didn't think that would happen. When I stop Adam just starts yelling random stuff, Kent comes back. We vow never to speak of this, we tell Adam's mom he just left us, she calls the police to look for him, they never find him, as far as I know. I still talk to Kent regularly Jake doesn't really talk to us anymore, we only hang out if we go somewhere he wants to go. I'm not sure why these threads exist, it seems like all Skinwalker slash Goatman stories are basically the same, but I guess I might as well contribute my own story. So there's this abandoned old oil rig in the woods right down the road from my house. My buddy David showed it to me when we were in high school, we used to go back there with a few other dudes to smoke some weed without having to worry about being caught. He said it was part of his dad's property and that he used to play back there all the time when he was a kid and that it was perfectly safe. David was also a compulsive liar and would lie about the stupidest shit just to see if he could get away with it. Anyway, he told me and my two buddies Chris and Kyle that we could use it whenever we wanted. Fast forward a handful of years, this story takes place a couple of years ago when my buddies and I are in college. We don't really talk to David anymore. In fact we're pretty sure he has moved out of the state, but we hadn't spoken to him in so long that we weren't sure, either way we continue to use his little oil rig spot because at this point, it's just a peaceful, comfortable and quiet place to chill for a couple of hours and just shoot the shit. Chris was usually the one driving and I was always shotgun. It was getting pretty late on this particular evening. We usually leave before it gets dark because the woods in this area are creepy as shit, but we had all been drinking for a while and Chris wanted to wait it out for another 30 to 40 minutes before he drove anywhere. We all decided to step outside of his car for a cigarette and this is when shit started getting weird. We were all talking about one of Kyle's past girlfriends and teasing him because she was nasty as hell and we heard this sound. We all heard it, but at this point we couldn't really tell you what it was or even what it sounded like, because we were all laughing when we heard it, 
it was just loud enough for us to barely hear it. Kyle must have heard it better than Chris and I because as soon as it registered, he had tossed his cigarette and nope D back into the car. Chris and I just stood staring off into the woods to see if we could hear it a little better. Unfortunately, we did. So this sound, this awful sound. It sounded like a smallish or medium-sized dog at first. For a split second, it was actually kind of comforting. I think Chris and I were both worried that we might be about to learn the hard way that David was full of shit about this being his dad's property. The comforting feeling didn't last a very long, though. The howling sound quickly went from a howling sound to a growling sound, and then from a growling sound to this horrible deep gurgling sound. It wasn't something any native animal could make under normal circumstances. It sounded kind of like a koala growl, only a little bit wetter, if that makes any sense. I still didn't know what that sound was, but I was 90% sure that either monsters were real or I just heard an animal get murdered. Either way, that's when I noped deep back into the car. Chris, of course, didn't think anything of it. He laughed at us and teased us from outside the car making your standard generic boogeyman jokes. He tells us that it was probably just David being an asshole, that we were just mistaken about him moving away. Chris is the kind of person who thinks he's a little smarter than he actually is. I don't know if it's because he wanted to prove to us that it wasn't a monster or if he is just an idiot but he went off to look for the source of the sound. I tried to reason with him, saying that it may not have been anything paranormal, but it could have very well been a psycho or a pissed animal or some shit, but he went off anyway. So Chris had been gone for about five minutes before Kyle and I start to get frigging worried. Five minutes isn't a long time, but he should have been back by then. He could have gone up to David's old house, knocked on his door, and wrestled David back down to the car in that amount of time. After ten minutes of texting and calling with no response, we decide we're gonna go look for him. We both get out of the car and sure enough, there's Chris. Just kind of standing there beside the oil rig itself. It was dark so I guess we didn't notice him while we were in the car. So Kyle and I are feeling mixed emotions. We're glad to see him but we're pissed that he was gone for so long. We bombard him with questions like what happened, what did he find, what took him so long, etc. Most of our questions were met with shrugs or stares, although we were able to get him to answer a few questions but they didn't say much. He just told us that he got lost and that he didn't hear his phone. Whatever, at this point all Kyle and I want to do is go home, but Chris wanted to keep looking around in the woods and was trying to get me to go with him, I assumed because he knew that I'm used to navigating the woods. We stood around for ages just arguing and begging him to take us back home and the more we talk the more uncomfortable Kyle and I are getting. There's something not right about Chris. He's usually an incredibly predictable person, but right now he's different. He's talking differently, like the tone of his voice is scratcher than usual and the things he is saying are downright strange. He's coming up with the weirdest imaginable reasons as to why we should explore the woods. Things like asking us if we needed to use the restroom, or if we wanted to see a dead animal, or something stupid that he found in the woods. It was at this point that I decided I was just going to walk home and I texted Kyle about how Chris was being frigging weird and that we needed to ditch him and go back to my place. He agreed. So we agreed to follow him into the woods and lag behind him as much as possible. 
The woods were pretty thick and it was almost pitch black, so it wasn't difficult to lose him and get back out onto the main road. Halfway during the walk back to my house, Chris calls me asking where the hell we went. I told him he was being creepy as hell so we left. Needless to say, he had no frigging idea what we were talking about. And that's about it. He dropped by my place and we continued drinking there. We argued about it for like 10 minutes. He insisted that we elaborated on how he was being creepy, we gave him examples, and he told us to shut the hell up, you're full of shit, you're just trying to scare me, it's not going to work, etc. We eventually just had to drop it because he was starting to get legitimately pissed because he thought the joke had been going on for too long. Be making tea. From the counter in the kitchen I can see all of my garden. Not wide, but long, with tall wooden fence at the bottom. Used to be sheds there but been having a clear route and they're gone, revealing the entire fence with one of the slats missing at about eye level. Fence backs out onto a field my favorite neighbor owns. Looking out over the garden. Thinking how creepy it would be if he were to suddenly appear and how much I would shit myself. Holy shit what the frigging hell. Pair of eyes appear, it's my neighbor. It's daytime, so not scared after realizing who it was. Favorite neighbor so instead of ignoring him finish making tea, go out to say hello to him, with cup of tea OFC. All the while he is just staring as I walk down the garden to him. He says nothing. Not creeped out, just amused at this point because he's the type to mess around to get on your nerves. Also the fact I had my Doberman at my feet made it pretty difficult to be scared. England so ask whether he'd like a cup of tea when within distance. No reply. Would, you? like a cup of tea off tea he sounds slightly garbled and i notice his eye has a slight twitch yet or coffee i have both while thinking wtf man you are on the other side of the fence i was only being polite you're meant to say no cough tea he sounds slightly more coherent but he's lacking his usual Irish accent. Are you all right? I ask as his head has started twitching a bit to the left. Starting to get creeped out. Remember every single thing I've ever read on slash x slash. Dog at this point has buggered off. T. He elongates the vowels monotonously, sounding creepy as hell. Sort of robotic. Hat, yet. Anyway I have to go do stuff now so I'll see you later. Or coffee. Bye, walk to house trying not to run. When I get indoors I look out the door and he's still standing there. Oh yeah, I ought to point out there was no particular smell, could have been masked by rank mud smell, he does have a pond. Couple of hours later. Go to kitchen to make more tea. As I open the door to the kitchen, I glance up. Heart attack mode engage. He's standing there. Jump back and almost fall over. His arm seems to be at a weird angle and he keeps throwing his head and twitching his wrist every now and again. Everything in my body tells me to not open the door and to leave the room and forget he's out there. Instead stand there omi gotting for a few minutes. He doesn't go. Stands and twitches. After a while of nothing happening I get sort of hysterical and start laughing madly. Step into kitchen. Grab thing nearest to me, oven mitts. He's standing at the door and I can sort of hear him through the door cup of tea. 
still laughing, crying as well, go to open the door and he just runs off down the alleyway. Be camping with friends. One annoys the hell out of me. No he's really into supernatural shit. Go into the woods for about half an hour. Come back to campsite. Start watching him very closely, making sure he notices. He looks at me. I make a weird smile using only a few muscles. My face kinda twitches. He asks me what's going on. Tell him I don't know what he's talking about in a really monotone voice. Slowly start to add on social skills, smiling correctly etc. Never talk to him again. Surprised there aren't more stories about cornfields. There was this one. Gillespie cornfield outside of Perry. Every Halloween go on a long ride with my friends from high school to Gillespie Field. There was a path through the corn wide enough for perhaps a tractor that lead to a large circle. Not quite like, a crop circle, but it sure gave off that sort of vibe. B-17, Halloween 2010 Lots of marine friends and hunter friends this year. Friends of friends this year, huge ass frigging party. We eventually had to start pulling the cars out of the circle because it was getting to be too crowded with six cars worth of people. It's getting to be two in the morning. People starting to drift out, about twenty people left in all. Hey Anon, come get some of this beer. At age 17 you can imagine I was pretty thrilled to be allowed in on the older kids games and all that, there was this super hot chick, Tina, Trina, I don't remember, who was all over me. Drunk as a fish in a whiskey barrel, but all over me. Too shy to initiate anything, but I did get to see her boobs because she took her top off. Dwindled down to ten or so people, me, five hunter friends, three marine friends, and two civilians not including me. Let's make a friggin' bone fire. Ten minutes later there's a huge fire pit going and we're dancing around it pretending to be Native Americans doing a ritual, laughing and having a good ass time. NBD, right? Hush washes over everyone. We all got the same rush of sudden unease and anxiety. Everybody freeze, more or less in the positions we'd been dancing in. Goofy as shit but nobody dares to make a sound. Only sounds are the sounds of the giant fire in the pit. Standing around for almost a minute before somebody whispers, what happened to all the crickets and shit? No wind, no crickets, no birds, no nothing. So we stopped dancing, thoroughly put off, and my buddy Joseph, a hunter, goes guys, I'ma go get my rifle. Murmur of agreement, the other hunters break off to go with Joseph and grab their shit, mostly pistols and knives besides Joe. Marine buddies, Kate, Samuel, and Ed, sit down in what I can roughly describe as perimeter sort of a thing around me and the other no training folks. At this point we're too nervous and anxious to talk. We're barely breathing. There's not a noise, just the fire pits crackling and a slight rustle in the corn and it's starting to get a little disconcerting. We sort of stuck close together and kept wide worried eyes on the stalks. Kate says something's not right. Mutual agreement, but nobody can put a finger on it. Ed sucks in a breath and everybody jumps a bit and looks over at him. If the wind is gone, what the hell is making the corn stalks rustle? Swear to God I nearly pissed myself right the hell there. 
We're all about five seconds and a sneeze away from needing a change of clothes when Joe comes back, white as a sheet, alone. Joe's pulling the bolt back on his rifle and sprinting back to the campfire circle. Tosses his pistol to Ed. Joe what the hell happened, you look like you saw Sam's mom. Joe sort of glares at Ed and then hisses don't you joke right now, there's something in the corn. You what M8? There's something in the corn I'm not messing around. Now see around there we're used to big dogs, large crows, even the occasional oversized cat, so everybody sort of gave Joe this slanty eyed the hell are you saying sort of look like he's trying to freak everybody out more. We keep trying to get him to tell us where the others are, what happened to the other four he went off with. Says they stayed at the cars to protect them. Rustling in the corn, Joe immediately wheels and takes a shot. Right next to my goddamn ear, Joe you cocksucker. Immediately feelings of fear and anxiety intensify. Some sort of low whimpering noise is coming out of the corn now. Joe is gibbering like a frigging drunk, muttering incoherently. I'm about to take the rifle from him when I notice that he's got some sort of black slime smeared on his pant leg. Then I nearly shit myself again. Because what crawled out of the corn was not a dog, not in the strictest sense I guess. It was shambling sort of awkwardly, with what looked like a broken leg, maybe a dislocated shoulder. It looked like it had, at some point in time, been some sort of hound dog, a black or dark brown bloodhound. There was chicken wire wound around its neck like a noose and it was coated in flies. There was black sludge dripping from its jowls and oozing out of a bullet hole near its right eye, which was itself drooling that same black crap like tears. Joe lost his frigging mind at this point, Sam, and I had to wrestle the rifle away from him. No more green text, it's hard for me to keep up. This shit still gives me the shakes. It kept shambling out of the corn towards us, wheezing and spitting that black shit onto the ground, the flies numerous enough that I could almost hear them buzzing from across the clearing. Joe is frigging losing his mind, collapsed on the ground and was trying to go fetal as me and my marine friends try to haul him away. They dog just kept walking, and as it kept coming it dragged something else out of the corn behind it, attached to the chicken wire wound around its neck. It took a second for me to piece it together in the light of the fire, but attached to the end of this morbid frigging umbilical cord was a beating heart. Like a bear-sized, still bleeding, leaking heart, thumping away and leaking that black slut shit. The flies were having a field day with it. The dog had no eyes for us. It was staring directly at the fire, like it was memorized or something. It dragged itself off kilter towards the fire, wheezing and spitting and sobbing, the heart beating excitedly on the chicken wire behind it. Its back legs were mangled and it sort of dragged itself along on its front legs and one back leg. The frigging weird thing is, as it got closer to us, I swear to God I thought I could hear some sort of words every time the dog wheezed and whimpered and cried. I didn't stick around to listen. Nobody else did, either. We grabbed Joe and beat feet back to where the path to the cars was, making a wide berth around the dog and its cargo. Before I left, I had to watch. I'm pretty sure the others had the same feeling because they weren't very far ahead of me when the show was over. I stopped and watched as it dragged itself, heaving and coughing, closer to the fire. The flies didn't even veer away when it stuck its head in the fire. It burned like someone had tossed a tire in there. It stunk something fierce. 
I just had to watch, because the dog didn't stop moving when it had been engulfed by the pit. The chicken wire kept moving, dragging the heart into the flames after the dog until they were both gone, and the only way anybody could have known it was there was the trail of black sludge on the ground and the smell of burning rubber. We were halfway home when I finally looked over at Joe. There was something that had been bothering me since the thing had gotten close enough to us for me to really hear it. I asked Joe what it had said to him, because I was almost positive that was why he'd been so freaked out. It'd been next to him in the corn and he'd heard it speaking to him. At first I thought maybe I was wrong, because he gave me this weird doubt glare and he wouldn't say anything. Then he took a deep breath and he leaned over to me, and he whispered this sentence in my ear. Come with me. I'll bring you home. And for a second I felt very cold. Because that was what I had heard, too. What I think I saw that night was Beelzebub. I'm not a noob so I know that Beelzebub is not the devil, not in the actual rhetoric. He's the Lord of the Flies. I don't know why he appeared to us that night, what he wanted, or what brought him there. I don't even know if what we saw really was a demon. Maybe it was just something in the corn. There's lots of stuff in the corn nobody really wants to talk about. At any rate, I moved out of Iowa, so I don't have to worry about the corn or what I saw. I should probably try to reconnect with my friends but I'm afraid. I'm afraid that I'll find out that Joe died in a fire, or slit his own wrists. Sometimes I have nightmares about it. And I think maybe Joe does too, which is why I'm afraid that I'll find he lit himself on fire. I keep a matchbook under my pillow because sometimes I kind of want to do it, just to see what it'd be like. First time I'm telling this story on this board, this happened about three year ago, this is one of few things in my life I have absolutely no explanation for, and I feel weird every time I think about it. Seventeen and living with my parents, it's summer. My neighbors are on vacation, I agreed to look after their pets slash plants daily. Wake up at the crack of ten and sag my way to the computer, upstairs. My mother is nagging me for an hour to go feed the pets, which I blow off. Hear door downstairs open and my mom talk to someone for a second, thinking nothing of it I stay occupied on the interweb. Nagging ceases. Around noon I decide to get my lazy ass up and go over to my neighbors. Ask her where she put the key to their house. Why? With a confused look, you already went over there. What? She tells me that she handed me the key, and watched me walk over to their house, and took the key from me when I returned, and asked if I had watered the plants. I've been in my room all day until now. When I get to the house, Nothing had been done yet for that day. What the actual shit. Avi talked about it after, no explanation could be found, and it has never been brought up since. I've always been scared of that house. I'll contribute some shit that might be related. This went down during my conscription. Fly to northern part of Sweden, Arvid's Jor. Ranger Recon Exercise Hurrah. Split from Platoon and Hump for one day with my squad until we're in the middle of frigging nowhere in the deep woods. Got one local light with us because safety regulations. He seems anxious the whole time, but me and my mates just think it's because he's hyped about the drill. Make camp. Lieutenant tells us to put up alarm mines, a trip wire with a tree mount flare that sounds loud as hell if triggered, 
and gives vision of the enemy for five seconds. Why? Haven't done this since basic. Just do it. Okay, whatever. Put four of them up around camp. Eat, wash, change socks, sleep. Two o'clock one mine goes off, everyone's wide awake scrambling for rifles. See dark, tall, and men like silhouette run away in the light of the flare. Lieutenant looks pale as hell, opens his backpack and loads his rifle with live ammo mag. What the actual hell is going on? Lieutenant says that there's wolves and it's just a safety measure. Bullshit, that was no frigging wolf. We sleep while Lieutenant sits on guard the rest of the night. Wake up at five, head back to base be casual Lieutenant called of the drill. Lieutenant won't talk about why he called it off or why he kept live ammo with him during a dry exercise. No that's spooky but it really creeped me out. Guess there's something behind all the troll lore we got here. B14 Living in Southern Colorado Just moved there at the time. Everyone warns me about skinwalkers. Oh whatever. Camping with my friend one night. Staying in a fort we made on his huge property. Fort was made in a clearing. Wooden logs stacked around perimeter. Top is covered by the tops of the trees surrounding the clearing. Sky is still partially visible, we spend the night texting and chilling under the stars. Hear some rustling from the bushes to the left of us. Hear a low growl. Probably just my dog, my friend says. Shine a flashlight on the bush, remembering his dog was up in his house. I grab my rifle, maybe we can shoot some dinner. Something human-sized darted from the bush, across our fort, and out the entrance. Unreal speed, all happened in under two seconds. Sat by the fire pit with our guns all night. I have a lot more stories, a few from that same night, if anyone's interested. B16 Summer Vacation Sleeping in summer house that is near woods northern Georgia. Mom and dad are sexing in their room. Hear incredibly weird scream. That isn't dad's passionate scream. Run for dad and mom. Wait for them to get their clothes on. Dad grabs his shotgun and we all go for a walk to see whatever the hell that thing was. Smell something rancid mom pukes. We hear branches breaking in the trees to the right of us. Dad shoots like four shots. Smell goes away. We are walking back home. Dad feeling like a great white hunter even though he's black lol. Go back to sleep. Hours later. Wake up due to some thumps in the front door. Go down the stairs only to find dad and mom scared out of their senses. Dad asks if I could go upstairs to see what it was from an upper window. Go. It looks like a furry slender man with a deer head. It looks straight at me with those goddamn white eyes. Tell dad. Looks at mom oh no it's back. What the hell dot jpg. Dad sends me to my room. Hear gunshots. Lots of them. Cry myself to sleep. Wake up the next morning. Dad and mom are making breakfast. Act normal cool and shit like nothing happened. Ask them about it. They say it was probably a nightmare. It freaking wasn't. Still to this day they don't talk about it or say it was just a nightmare. My own OC, real story, posted once before. 
not super duper too spooky for me type stuff, but it creeps me out. November 15, 2010 6 a.m. Dad and I are pulling into camp. Camp is a cabin on a 40-acre plot owned by Granddad on Dad's side. Marquette County, up of Michigan. My blind is 50 m, from the cabin, Dad drops me off, heads over to my brother's blind two miles away. My dad and I are the only ones around for a few miles. Anyways, I get to the blind, fire up the space heater and settle in. Hours pass without activity. No deer, but a few blue jays and miscellaneous birds here and there. Lunch time comes and goes. 1 p.m. See a doe come through my bait pile, 20 feet from blind. Picks through my apples and beets, looks in my direction then walks off. Keep an eye out for a while to see if a buck follows her in. Nothing happens. 1.50 p.m. Here steps behind my blind. Can't see what it is, no window looking back there. Probably just the doe, ignore it. 2 p.m., more steps. 2.35 p.m., more steps. 2.40 p.m., more steps. All right, this tomfoolery ends now, grab the point three zero to 30 and step out the door. To investigate. Nothing in sight. Here steps once more later but ignore it, nothing sighted all day. 5.30 p.m., nearly dark, Dad pulls up in the truck. I pack up and get in. Hey Dad were you around the camp at all today? No, I was in the blind all day. Think nothing of it and drive home. I hadn't heard of 4CHAN at that point, but now as in slash x slash file I'd never have the balls to go out there, or anywhere in a woods, alone again. It was probably just a deer or coyote. Nobody has ever seen anything weird out there, or at least told me about anything. My dad has a giant trap line out there that he goes on alone and has never run across anything. Although he hasn't really done anything with it in the last two years. Hey slash x slash, some really creepy shit just happened between me and my cousin. Let's call her Che. Be sighting at kitchen table, browsing slash x slash. Che and her mom come in, visiting. Che's 19 years old. Supposedly she's had an exorcism performed on her when she was 16 because messing around with an Ouija board. She acts like intelligent three-year-old ever since. Mom and aunt talk, Che is on her phone and comes towards me, sits next to me. On her phone but hunches over, rocks back and forth. Ignore her, she's weird as hell. Mom and aunt leave room, as soon as they do she leaps toward me and hugs my arm, plays with my bracelet. What? Do you have a girlfriend? Had one. What happened to her? We just weren't feeling it. How old are you? She frigging starts feeling up my thigh and almost grabs my dick. Eighteen. Push her hand away. WTF Mom and aunt walk back in, Che backs down and sits back in her chair. Ishigidigi.jpg Aunt looks strangely unfathomed. Later they both go grocery shopping, Che stays at home. In room playing Xbox. Left phone in living room. Go fetch it. Catch Che holding my little brother's hand almost mounting him. Nope.jpg What the hell are you doing? She gets off him, 
back to rocking back and forth. Pick him up and carry him back to my room. She's weird bro. What the hell just happened? I seriously think she's just messing around, but her mood changed instantly when she did it. She always pulls weird shit like this and it's unsettling as hell. Is she some sort of frigging demon because if she is she's here for two weeks staying in town? Pick unrelated. 99% sure it's not a skinwalker, but I don't want to make another thread. In Vegas. Go out into the undeveloped part of the desert to look at the city. Alone. It's 11 p.m. Looking into the desert to see where I'm going, and if there are animals. Pitch frigging blackness. Been out here before, that's not normally what happens and Vegas is incandescent at night. Look out the city again, then look back. Normal level of darkness, figure I'm psyching myself out, scan the area again. See a figure about 8 feet tall supremely broad shoulders, gaunt body structure about 300 yards away. Haha <laughs> overactive imagination or some kids set up a scarecrow. Look back to the city, shake my head. Figure it's time to leave before I shit myself out of fright. One last look back. Complete silence. The frigging thing lifts up one of its arms and points at me. Nope right out of there. Alright guys I'll tell you my story. I'm getting cold shivers just frigging typing this out. I've recently moved to uni, and I rarely go back home and I've always loved fishing slash camping. Anyway I came home one holidays and my oldest friend who loves camping suggested we go and I was leaving in a few days so I was like hell frigging yet, anyway we left at about 4 pm so the sun wasn't setting but only had a few hours left, anyway we got lost and it was around 7.30 when we took a turn into what we thought was the fishing site that he knew of, and I live in a rural town as it is, and I mean really frigging rural, we seen one car whilst driving there, so we took a turn into a dirt road, it's dark as frigging shit, and we just make out a sign that was poorly written say, trespassers will be shot, if they're lucky so me and Jacko have always been curious, and we thought oh this is probably it, I was driving down this road that went into a property and it was just odd, a few burnt out cars on the side of the road and various old pieces of machinery, Anyway as I am driving for about two more minutes, I see a small glowing, as I get closer I see another light, so I put my high beams on and see it a man in his forties next to a trailer smoking, and as we are starting to come closer, he visibly grips the trailer door with the free hand. He then starts turning it whilst keeping an eye on us, his ute was pretty busted, it had mud and blood on it, not really a big thing seeing as a lot of people go pigging and hunting around this area. So I wind down the window and simply ask hey mate you wouldn't know where the river is by any chance. He then slowly removed his hand of the trailer door, and smoothly walks over, he was a rough looking guy, big burly man missing teeth and hadn't showered for a while. Yeah but why do you want to go to the river? In a questionable tone, and before I could speak Jacko blurted out for some good fishing and camping he then leant into the car and said it's over there, whilst pointing the way we came, he then paused for a bit and said, be careful what you catch me and Jacko thanked him and I asked what he was doing out here, working or something he then looked me dead in the eyes and said yes something like that we then drove off kind of laughing about it and how frigging random it was, anyway as we drove out a dog ran past in a lot of blood with patches of it hair missing and it had looked like it was starved for a long frigging time, 
I didn't swerve seeing as it was going fast as hell, but it didn't even seem to care about the car, so we took the turn that Jacko remembers. Seriously I wish I had a map at this point, we drove into this long driveway and he insisted we keep going as we kept driving we passed massive grain silos, and an old run down shed, then I seen a massive house in the distance, I stopped and put the high beams on and it looked like a relatively new house like an 80s style, but it looked as if there was no one living there and the road had no tracks on it, it was smooth dirt. I stopped the car to asses where we were and going then I seen a small light fly into the air for a solid 700 meters straight, it looked like a tracer bullet from a gun, but there was dead silence until three seconds after I heard a crackle. It was a mix between static and sticks breaking. Nope.jpg, so I drove away thinking what the hell? But nothing of it because I didn't want to stress Jacko out and we both kept calm thinking it was a shooting star, we both knew it wasn't, then we drove for another god knows how long but apparently it was an hour because it was 8.30ish. And whilst we were driving I swear we went in circles, I seen the same mailbox twice, then Jacko finally says that's it that's the one. Frigging finally I thought, so we pull in and go down a few turns and find the spot, there were small campfires that had burnt out beforehand, so we got out got our chairs and collected our firewood, and got a massive fire going casted our lines and started fishing. We talked about how my hometown had changed and stuff, anyway it was around 11 o'clock and I went to text mum saying we got here safe and sound but as soon as I got my phone, it showed the iPhone recharge symbol, I charged it fully before just in case of an emergency, it was a 3GS and had some wear, so I thought I must have just frigging shit itself but I thought it was odd. Anyway we decided to get more firewood, and we went together because we had one torch, and as we went deep on the river bed, we seen this tree that was just out of place, a huge eucalyptus tree, it was out of place because all the trees around it were about one fourth its size, and the odd thing was there was a piece of farming equipment hanging off it, now it looked like the end of a plow but with the hinge that turns it still connected to it. Now it was easy 200 to 300 kilograms, and there was no frigging way it could have been put there like it defied the laws of gravity, it was hanging off the biggest branch, and it was wedged in there deep. Now it kind of looked as if it was thrown there, but it was about 3 meters long so me and Jacko just thought whatever, let's go back. So we collected our firewood and made this bastard huge, and it illuminated the area so much, I was able to see the other campfires that were previously there, made out a triangle shape pointing to that tree, I asked Jacko about it and he said it was probably just a convent thing that happened, now our fishing lines both had bells on them. Now we slept next to each other, no homo in our swags, and we both dozed off after talking. For what seemed ages, anyway I woke up from a dream where I was driving for ages anyhow, I turned over to see Jackson frigging staring at me, I froze for like three seconds then remembered that the creepy can't, always sleep with his eyes open, I shrugged it off but he had a half snickering grin on his face and at the time I had a cold so unless it was a real frigging pungent smell I couldn't smell it, but I felt my nostrils burn, and this smell that I have only ever smelt one, when my uncle's horse died he burned it with diesel and it is to date the only smell that came close to what it was. Now for some reason and I still don't know, I passed out and I had the most messed up dreams I had ever had, previously I had drunk for eight days, straight vomited blood, and started hallucinating. But this was completely sober and frigging horrid. 
I dreamt I was being attacked by Jacko and he tried to kill me, and that a figure, all I can describe it as a much scarier version of Gollum, was chasing me, then tearing apart my insides whilst it screamed like a banshee, then its scream turned into a bell, I came to and it was morning and there was a fish on the line. I shot up frigging gasping for air and noticed Jacko was reeling in his fish. I went to say man I had the most messed up dream, but as I spoke a mouthful of blood fell out of my mouth, he turned around seeing it and looked at me, and he turned into a frigging ghost, like I shit you not I watched his skin turn a pale white with a shade of green. And he said, you too? I looked at him in awe, thinking what the hell? He then explained how he had weird dreams and woke up coughing up phlegm then it was blood, he said a smell made him gag. Now I always keep calm so I just covered it up with, it must have been the Oporto, fast food outlet, we had yesterday. He reluctantly said, yeah, yeah. So he reeled in his fish and it was a carp which means we had to kill it, and we couldn't eat it or put it back in the water, now we thought wouldn't it be funny if we put it on the fire, so we did, and as we did something kind of just fell out of its mouth, it looked like a worm covered in black ink, I went to poke it with a stick then at that exact moment I touched it, the banshee scream I had heard from my nightmare came from behind me, I turned around seeing birds flock, now for some. Reason I stared at the birds for about a minute or so, now I turned around noticing Jacko eating raw steak, now he loves his rare, but he pulled it out of the butcher's paper and ate it, I asked him if he was okay and he murmured with a croaky voice you too? Now I can't explain how he sounded, but he had no tone in his voice and a weird pitch, he just sat down and ate, now I cooked my steak in shock but kept calm because I don't want to startle whatever is eating raw steak in front of me, then he finished. And moved from the clearing whilst saying, come, come, in the messed tone, and I said I'm going to go and check the dry lines we put out, he then started dry heaving from the distance, and at the time I was like, well that's what you get for eating raw steak. So then I went T to check the dry lines and this was the point where I had thought I lost it, there Jackson was on his dry line reeling it in, I calmly walked over and said Jacko? He then looks at me and says, are you feeling okay, in a normal tone. I was kind of startled and said yeah why wouldn't I be? He then told me then after that scream. I just turned around and stood of into the distance for 10 minutes just ignoring him, he said I ignored him, when he said he was going to the toilet and checking the lines. I told him my story about what just happened, and we both had tears building up, and I said look let's cook our breakfast and leave. Now as we cooked breakfast we talked about nothing what happened last night, or just then to keep our minds off it we laughed at some of the stories I had from Muni, and he told me some of the family issues around his family, true bromance stuff, now with everything packed away, I asked him if he wanted to check out that tree once more, he was reluctant, but we went to anyway and we both seen the tree, and ran after we seen, that the goddamn plow had gone. A 3M 300 kilograms plow is frigging missing. We ran to the ute. Jumped in and drove away. Anyway we had another two hours to go before we got into town, and I asked him to pass me my phone, so I tried turning it on for just the odd chance it might work, and it did, I thought oh right oh, but odd, now as it turned on with 10%, I thought we could get a photo of us driving for memory's sake, I gave the phone back to him, to take the photo he took it and then proceed to show what he took, and he slid his finger across to a photo that is burnt into my frigging skin. 
It was a photo of both of us both sleeping in our swags. I told him to delete it. We then put the radio on, and the only station we could get was this old station, that had Bible quotes in between song interchange. Anyway we got on the old highway to the next town, which was exactly 84 kms away, the car suddenly broke down. Now it was something like 10.20 am, now the car had been going fine, it was an old Subaru Brumby and I know a bit about cars, so I had a look at the motor and everything was fine, I checked the fuel, and it was perfect. I tried to start it up and it just wouldn't tick over, and the only thing I could think of was a flooded motor but it was an Australian summer probably about 40 degrees and we had no rain for weeks, so I decided to check it anyway I took off the air filter and I nearly spewed, it was full of those little black worm things. I shook the hell out it, and stomped on those little worms, then cleaned it out with an old rag. I put everything back together and the car started up perfectly. We then drove to the next town and fueled up. Now this town was about population of 1000, so the fuel prices were frigging outrageous, but we had to pay them. The old lady at the counter asked us where we had been because it had looked like we had a rough night. We told her we went camping near this and whereabouts it was and she looked at us in horror and said her son had gone out there once, and he had some strange things happen to him and as Jackson went to say what we encountered, I blurted, ah well nothing bad happened to us, except for the shit fishing, then we finished paying and left. We went straight to the pub afterwards and had a beer and counter lunch. Neither of us wanting to talk about what had happened. Now just when we thought the weird shit was over, the guy from the trailer in the middle of nowhere walks in, now me and Jackson both just sipped on our beers hoping he wouldn't see us or come over. Surely enough he orders his two he's new and pulls over a stool, now he looks worse than where and asks did you have a good fish? I reluctantly said not really, hey, and did a kind of awkward laugh. Jackson just had his head down eating his steak and chips, and yes it was cooked, then he kind of just stared at us with a look, as if he was waiting for us to talk about or messed up night, now at this stage I'm kind of thinking that maybe he screwed with us all last night, but there was no way, then he says, you boys would have a tough night I dare say. I looked at him calmly whilst my body was clenching and reluctant to do anything, and just said, we seen some things. He then gets up and says, a few people don't come back from that spot, you shouldn't and neither should I, if you ever see me again, walk away, because it won't be me. Then walked out of the pub, me and Jackson finished our meals and drove home unpacked all his gear and he said look we are going to leave this all behind us, we're now stronger. We shook hands and I gave him a hug because I was leaving the next day. We have only ever once talked about it since and it was a short convo. It was about five months ago. We still keep in contact and I'll be seeing him next month hopefully. I haven't been camping since. I really want to know what happened to that random trailer guy, but at the same time I don't. I have recurring nightmares every now and then. It is true fear that I experienced and this is the first time I have ever spoke of it. Finn Slash X Slash